Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are on the engine dyno with Zach's brand new version two, 572 big block Chevy. Dun, 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 dun. Big block Chevy on the dyno. So this is Zach's 572 back for some upgrades and a general refresh after five years of service in the field. If you're unfamiliar, Zach Mertens is sort of our R&D guy for the 572 Extreme. He got this engine five years ago and since then has been absolutely destroying BF Goodrich tires. I think he told me he's been through 18 sets of 37 inch BFG KO2s. So version one of this engine was 733 horsepower and 733 foot pounds of torque. It was a very balanced, perfect engine. It had street ability, it made big power, it had torque that came on quick, and it was fantastic. But human nature, we always want a little bit more power. So this motor is back for some upgrades. In last week's video, you guys watched me assemble this whole engine, but if you haven't seen that video, let me give you the quick details. It's still the same rotating assembly. Basically, we did give him a new set of a little heavier duty connecting rods that we have come out with, with some ARP 2000 hardware. The original pistons were recoded at Calico and I've gone back into the same block and the same original crankshaft was then rebalanced for the new rotating kit. We upgraded the cylinder heads to our new Smetting 385cc fully CNC ported aluminum heads. Previously this motor had a set of 335s so we've gone up a little bit in the cylinder head department. Zach took it upon himself uh, at some point to convert the intake manifold to a sequential port fuel injection with a 4500 flange big boy throttle body. That's good stuff. Originally this motor came with a 4150 flange throttle body. Originally this motor came with a 4150 flange intake manifold, um, but if you're after horsepower, you can't beat the big 4500. Camshaft, we have stepped up. The new cam in this motor is 265, 277, duration at 50. 680 lift on the intake and the exhaust on a 112 plus four. So in order to better match the big heads and the big intake and the big power that Zach is after, we had to step the camshaft up. Why wouldn't we? To accommodate all of that, the valve train has also been beefed up. It still has a comp cams, a billet steel core hydraulic roller camshaft, but now we're running a set of Johnson link bar lifters with Jessel Sportsman rocker arms. So we will be setting preload with the Jessel rocker, which you can do. Jessels don't have to only be on solid roller stuff. You can run them on hydraulic stuff. So in today's video, we are gonna run this guy on some good old pump 93 octane fuel. Having built so many of these big block Chevys, we sort of already know that they're all gonna want about 12 and a half to one air fuel ratio. So in this video, when we're dyno testing it and dyno tuning it, we're just gonna target 12 and a half pretty much the whole time and we'll just be playing with ignition timing. You know, a naturally aspirated uh, pump gas motor, they're pretty simple to tune wide open throttle, so this should be pretty quick and easy. We're gonna start with 32 degrees of total timing. Let's make a hit and see how she looks. Okay, before we start making pulls with this engine, let me know in the comments, how much horsepower do you think it's gonna make? Remember the old combo made 733, so let me know your thoughts. How much are we gonna pick up with this new combo? Okay, okay, first pull, 775 horsepower, 680 foot-pounds of torque, and we're pulling all the way up to 7,000 RPM, nice and clean. Again, that was with 32 degrees of timing, so let's go ahead and bump up to 34 degrees of total timing and see how much she picks up. All right, 
Second pull down, 34 degrees of total timing, starting to get the motor where it wants to be. And we are knocking on the door, 799 horsepower, gains pretty much across the board over 32 degrees. That big of a gain means we can put definitely another couple degrees in this baby. Uh, down here, the original pool had a little blip, probably nothing, probably just dyno stuff, but we're really focused on the meat up here. So it loved 34 degrees. Let's go ahead and put two more in it and we'll run 36 degrees of total timing. If y'all are watching that screen uh, recording, you already know we're over 800 horsepower. 36 degrees in the motor, 818. And it's carrying really, really nice and flat. What I really wanna show you guys though is here's the first pull we did with 32 degrees. And you can see that it peaked uh, down here at 6,200 RPM. Um, and as we've added time, we've actually shifted that peak higher now all the way up at 6,600 RPM. Just kind of a cool little thing. But as you can see, gains across the board. We're over 700 foot pounds of torque now and over 808 horsepower. Still on pump gas with a hydraulic roller camshaft with under 700 lift. Yeah, big block Chevys are pretty cool. So if it liked 36, let's keep going. Let's find where the engine lays over. It's an NA motor, it's not gonna hurt itself. So let's go ahead and put two more degrees in it. We're gonna run 38 degrees total and just find exactly where this engine's spark threshold is. All right, ignition timing is kind of the gift that keeps on giving until it doesn't. And I think we're at that limit. So this is with 38 degrees of total timing in the engine. And you can see that it did pick up. It made 823 horsepower on its own. However, there's more to the story than just the peak power. So let me go ahead and first, I'm gonna take this graph off and let me overlay the fifth pool we made, which was with 36 degrees, 818. Okay, now let me overlay the 34 degree pool. All right, so the 34 degree pool is in red, 36 degree pool is in blue. 
And you can see we have a pretty big chunk. Uh, we picked up approximately 20 horsepower through across the whole curve with two degrees. So a big gain, you could say. Now let me take off the fourth pool and let me overlay the sixth pool with another two degrees. And you can see that our gains now are much, much smaller. They are still there. You know, it did pick up five or 10 numbers across the board, but this is a telltale sign that we're at the timing limit. I, if I put 40 degrees in the motor, I can almost guarantee you that it's gonna drop below this blue curve now because we put two more in it and it barely picked up. We didn't have a big gain, we had a little gain with the same two degrees of timing. That's kind of what you're looking for when you're tuning spark. You wanna keep adding timing while you have big chunks. And then once you find that little itty bitty pickup, take a step back because it's probably not worth it. The motor is probably on edge of pre-detonation. We don't wanna be on edge of pre-detonation. And the extra five horsepower we got is not worth two degrees of timing. So this engine, I would say for a drag race application, 36 degrees is probably where it would need to be. Um, whereas for like a burnout application where it's going to be wide open throttle for 60 or more seconds, I'd probably say knock it down to 34 degrees. Um, you got to kind of, it's a balancing act of your risk threshold versus the timing. Now, again, this is a 10 to one pump gas street motor. A little detonation is not going to hurt it, but if we can avoid it, we should probably do that. So absolute ripper of an engine though, 823 horsepower is the peak she made. Now let's overlay the original version one of this combo. And here you can see a completely different story being told. So the original engine had a very balanced peak horsepower to peak torque number and it had a very flat torque curve all the way from below 3000 up to its old red line of 6000. And it, that's a great sign of a great street motor. Version two I would argue is more of a strip engine, more of a race style application. And you can really tell that by the difference in peak horsepower to peak torque. This motor's turning a lot more RPM now, and you're gonna see that spread keep getting bigger. You can also see how much more torque the old engine was making with its smaller heads, smaller camshaft, and smaller intake manifold. So what people need to remember is with a naturally aspirated spec engine, it's all a compromise, it's all a trade off. The more RPM you take it, the more horsepower you make, you're giving up a little bit of torque down low. So you always wanna look at the big picture and try to figure out what's best for your application and what your needs are. If you want an, a, a balanced street cruiser that can do it all every single day, I'd probably say the 733 guy is your man. If you're looking to live above 5,000 RPM and you don't care about the below 4,000 RPM or even below 4,500 RPM stuff, then here you go, big cam, big intake, big cylinder heads. So that's pretty cool. We are pretty excited. That's the most power that we've made out of a 572. It's cool to see that we picked up 90 horsepower naturally aspirated with a top end, basically, heads, intake, and camshaft. Um, so that's really exciting. Still the same compression. I bet if we were able to squeeze more compression into this, there's probably still some more power left on the table, um, but we'll have to save that for next time. Well, alrighty guys. That is a wrap for the 93 octane test on Zach's version 2.0, Smetting 572. Next week's video, we're putting this baby on C85. See how much horsepower we can unlock with a little bit of nitro thrown into the mix. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you. We'll see you next time.